I'm Lauren Morelli. I'm the showrunner and executive producer of Tales of the City. I'm Garcia. Uh, I play Jake, Jake Rodriguez on Tales of the City. One more time. <laughs> I'm Garcia. I play Jake Rodriguez on Tales of the City. Thank you for letting me do that. What did it feel like for you to step into the role in terms of like the pressure of representation? Do you feel that? Did you feel that when you first took the role? Has it shifted at all now? Getting the role was like, oh, I'm just doing a project. I didn't see it being a bigger thing than the non-for-profit theater that I did back in Chicago. And so now, after all the interviews and everything being out and people seeing it more and more, I think that's when the panic started to hit. I think there's just so few people like me and within, within mainstream media, and so I think that when we do get our foot in the door, people then look to us as... Certainly, I think it's, you can become a symbol. I don't know. How do you feel? What does that, what does that mean for you? I feel like I'm responsible for not doing harm, but I think it's really dangerous to fall into the idea of like getting it right. Right, yeah. Because what is that? Right, like, we, then we're one thing. We're mm -hmm. like the center of a bullseye, and if you don't hit it, then you fail. Right, exactly. I think it's dehumanizing mm -hmm. and, and kind of misses the point of what a giant community we are. Yeah. So the idea is like, let's figure out who Jake is mm -hmm. and let's make sure we're doing Jake justice. Right. I think we can get really wrapped up in adjectives, right? Right. We have like a young, black, trans woman, whatever it is, and, and right from the outside in, mm -hmm. That feels dangerous to me. I think that is, and I think that that was my concern with being like tokenized or being mm -hmm. uh, fetishized or you know mm. things that that people do to to trans people in particular and trans people of color. And so, but I uh, after every script reading, it was really nice that like oh nothing in here made me cringe. And I think Tails does an amazing job with every queer person on screen, uh, writing them as people and yeah. not like whatever box that people yeah, want to check yeah, off. Yeah. I think about this all the time for myself. Yeah. I was growing up in the 80s in Pittsburgh and early 90s in Pittsburgh. Okay. I didn't see lesbians on TV. I didn't see lesbians anywhere. I guess the only lesbian I might have had access to was Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. But I don't really remember her being in my purview. Uh -huh. So I had an idea, like I was aware that lesbians existed. Mm -hmm. And I think my idea of what a lesbian was, was like you lived in Vermont and you for sure wore cargo shorts and Birkenstocks. <laughs> Fully, and uh -huh. you were probably butch. Right. You were probably yes. like as There's othered of, yeah. as possible. And so I wasn't that, so therefore I wasn't gay. Because mm -hmm. oh. no one had shown me okay. that there was a, a very a wide swath. So that was your only, really? I think so. Okay. What about you? It's like a really weird one. Um, there's this movie called 13. It's just two 13 year old girls that, you know, they have a kiss or whatever mm. happens. And then like years later when I was a freshman, this girl I was dating at the time was like, have you seen Boys Don't Cry? Watched that and I was like, what is this? Was that scary? I don't know if it was scary, but more so like, oh, that exists. And in retrospect, do you think seeing those examples on screen, mm. were those like, important milestones in your own journey? Maybe I it like, I saw this thing, and so that means that this exists. So if, right. if so I, I found it that. in me, if I had cho if I choose that, then it's like, well, it's, yeah. it exists, it's yeah. out there. It's not arbitrary, it's not like crazy. Because you've seen it. Because I've seen it before. And I think maybe that's what Tails hopefully does. I had moments all the time mm -hmm. where I would watch something we were shooting, mm -hmm like gender queer burlesque performances. And I would like see those happening. I would be standing behind the monitors and I would watch mm -hmm. that and be like, this is insane. Like who is letting us make this show? <laughs> like how did this happen? <laughs> and then that would happen in, in a really profound way also. One of my most cherished memories from making the show is we were shooting the finale and there's a scene when you and May are slow dancing. And there was like this meta thing where I just felt like Look at what we're doing. Like, look at these two people of color on screen who represent like a really nuanced queer identity and relationship that we haven't necessarily seen before. And it was so tender and so beautiful. And I just, you know, there are hard days when you're making a show and there are days that are super stressful. And that moment I was like, oh, oh, this is why we're doing this. I love it. It was fun. I love you. I love you. Can we do like a... What? No, I'm okay. too old for that. And then just do this. I'm wearing a blouse, Garcia. <laughs> this is a real easy, cheesy <laughs> one. 
ایزی چیزی